Palaroga Shark Media. Hello and welcome to Palace Intrigue. I am your host, Mark Francis. In the Daily Mail, Maureen Callahan writes, Let's get one thing straight. We don't call our coasts Rivieras in America. They're beaches, lakefronts, or bays. We love them. We sunbathe by them. We perambulate and picnic and walk our dogs. But we don't call them Rivieras. As for that orchard, it's clearly meant to evoke her and Harry's grand $14 million estate in Montecito, replete with fruit trees, a chicken coop, and rose gardens. You know, the things that average American women can relate to as inflation kills the dream of ever owning a starter home, but buy Megan's overpriced kitchenware. We open the promotional video with a woman's hand arranging pink and white roses against a backdrop of greyish, the film filtered to look old-timey, while Nancy Wilson, and I defy anyone under the age of 50 to know who that is, sings to a fusty big band swing time sound with I Wish You Love. Our next shot is a fuzzy, soft focus look at Megan from a distance, whipping something up in her kitchen while wearing an expensive-looking white top, as so many of us do. Because when we think of Megan, immediately we think of cooking, sweets, treats, the jams and preservatives she's going to sell here, along with a forthcoming cookbook. Then we flash to the title card, American Riviera Orchard, written in the style of Megan's famed calligraphy, with a vaguely royal insignia hovering above, all in thin gold embroidery. Clash or trash? I vote the latter. This was everything the late Queen Elizabeth dreaded the Sussexes commodifying royalty, using it to shield some copper cookware and start an imitation Ina Garten show while capitalising on their family never more in crisis than now. As the king has withdrawn from his public duties, as the slimmed-down monarchy suffers amid Kate's prolonged absence, Meghan applies for a US trademark to sell tablecloths, napkins, glasses, decanters, jams and jellies. It's pedestrian verging on camp. Royal commentator Richard Fitzwilliams believes that Netflix may actually renew their deal with the Sussexes, saying, What is significant here is the link with Netflix. This implies that they may keep the contract, which expires next year. They omitted mentioning it on their new website. This is pivotal for them. Let's see what American Riviera Orchard leads to for the Sussexes. Royal expert Robert Jobson told The Express, Meghan knows exactly what she is doing. I don't think there is energy to rise to it from the palace. The king is recovering from cancer, William is supporting him, and his wife is recovering from an operation herself. There is no fight for this, and it will just raise the brand more. The deal was with the Queen. America is the land of the free, and people would start to kick off if they, the royal family raised it. Everyone needs to make money. I don't think they fear the royal family in a way they did before. They know there is no fight now that the king is ill. They have left, and they won't be returning. Harry's timing at the Diana Awards was a little curious. According to People, William departed the event around 8.30pm. It wasn't until midnight or roughly 5pm Pacific time that Harry started his informal video call with the Knights Award winners. Against a backdrop featuring a wood-panelled ceiling, Harry expressed he was seriously impressed by their efforts and made light of the late hour. Enjoy the rest of your evening, if that's your plan, he quipped in footage shared on his and Megan's website. Don't get into too much trouble if you're continuing on. And thank you very much for inspiring so many others while also safeguarding my mother's legacy. I truly appreciate it. Yusuf Ben Tafit described the night to the Telegraph. William gave a speech at the Science Museum at 7 p.m. where he also distributed awards. After the ceremony, the winners had to travel back to their hotel near Waterloo Station, nearly five miles away for a video conference with Prince Harry, which occurred between midnight and 1 a.m. Mr. Ben Tafit said it was surreal having Prince William in person at the museum and then Prince Harry via video at a different place. Following the ceremony, we gathered at a hotel for the video call with Prince Harry, which was a well-guarded surprise, although we knew to keep our schedules open for an evening event. The specifics were a delightful revelation. It was impressively coordinated despite the logistical complexities, resulting in a smoothly executed evening. As for the late appearance, perhaps Harry didn't want to overshadow Meghan's launch of her marmalade stand by honouring his mother. Palace Intrigue will be right back. Royal historian Tom Bauer has expressed criticism towards the advisers guiding William and Kate through Kate Gate. 
In an interview with The Reaction, Bauer highlighted concerns about the strategic guidance provided by private secretaries to the monarchy, labeling labeling them as yes-men who are failing to uphold the institution. Bauer emphasized that the royal family is on the verge of crisis due to what he perceives as a decline in sound counsel. Bauer contended that Kate should not bear blame for the situation, suggesting that she was pressured into participating in the photo shoot to address speculations about her health following the surgery. Addressing the broader issue, Bauer expressed concerns about the competence of both Kensington Palace and Buckingham Palace's private secretaries, indicating a systemic problem in providing effective advice to the royals. He criticized the reliance on individuals who may not offer robust guidance, attributing this to a preference for yes-men within the royal court, a trait he believes is shared by the king and potentially Prince William. Bauer argued for a more professional approach for handling such matters, suggesting that engaging a press association photographer could have averted the controversy altogether. Royal expert Jenny Bond says, We are in danger of bullying a lady who is trying to recover from a very serious operation. I think of how she must be feeling this morning. Absolutely miserable, I think. Her Mother's Day was obviously ruined by this row. She was photographed in the car with William. From what we can see, she didn't look that happy. She must feel under intense pressure now whenever she's going to be seen in public. And there you have it. If you'd like to email us, our address is thepalaceintrigue at gmail.com. Please follow us on Spotify, Apple, or your app of choice. I'm Mark Francis. My thanks to John McDermott. This is Palace Intrigue and good times.